video is being resubmitted. Originally, it had violated YouTube's terms of service regarding hate speech. Of course, there was no hate speech in it. I was merely questioning if so if Nick Cannon had say made the same hateful statements that he made towards white people and someone had if the shoe was on the other foot and someone had said that about people who were black or some other skin color, whether or not he would have received the same support on the various social media platforms. And originally, it was caught by artificial intelligence, and then it was verified by the human support staff who obviously don't understand that one should be able to pose the question as if somebody else had asked it. And because the words were no-nos, of course, uh, context is lost. A strike was given to my channel. Strike one! Here's the video with some parts edited out. It's the double standard that I find so upsetting today. The fact that in this world of hypersensitivity, it is only one side that is able to show their outrage. And they do it time and time again. Nick Cannon goes ahead and states that white people are and so many blazingly racist Facebook posts defending him, calling him their black king. Go, my black king, speak the truth. And I raised my voice and merely stated, here's the part of the video where I asked if the shoe was on the other foot, how would people react? Everybody would have been rightfully up in arms against me. But there's no longer any inward look from such people, just an outward attack and an in, inner defense of this ideological position on social media or interpersonally. If you dare to call affirmative action systemic racism, which it is because it's a law that favors one group over the other, get ready to be yelled at by some SJW. Tell them to search for systemic racism that's still on the books, and of course, they won't demonstrate laws that existed from Jim Crow because they have been removed entirely from the law books, they'll just accuse you of racism for even daring to second guess them. Calmly explain why you don't support Black Lives Matter, the organization, to somebody who thinks of themselves as quote unquote centrist, and you will not hear a measured response. You're going to hear shrieking and yelling and the old shutdown of the conversation, you're a racist. I don't blame stupid people for thinking these things. Their mind's been infected, it's been overrun. I blame the people that know they're wrong and offer no pushback. I blame the tepid and meek people out there who refuse to raise their voice in defiance. The double standard is allowing racism to exist on one side and everybody kowtowing meekly to it, backing off and ceding more ground to these intersectionalist woke types that will just keep invading, invading your mind with this pathogen of wokeness, of racism, and there knows no end. It will keep going. And the more that they advance, the more people they engulf in their cancerous ideology. And it's because nobody will speak up against their insanity, their illogic, and their own personal bias and hatred that they have within them, that they want you to feel, their own inner demons that they want to get out and feel power over another by making them feel the same. We are letting absolutely insane people take over the discourse, dictate to us what we must do, and we all suffer accordingly. Our country is being torn apart at the seams by the radical left, and we must, we must stand up to it. We are so worried about someone's pronouns, about being deferential to someone of a different race, allowing them to actively promote Marxism and communism. And if you come back and say that capitalism is a superior system, well, again, get ready for that hammer to the head like the federal agent got in Portland from the rioters. And the media still calls them largely peaceful protesters. Yeah, I have a big problem with that. And in the meantime, the true communists, that which you wish to lead us to, the promised land for the leftists, the Chinese are loading up Uyghurs onto train and, and doing their best Adolf Hitler impression by taking a minority killing them, putting them in concentration camps, and harvesting their organs for sale to the Middle East. But for the Saudis that are purchasing said organs... I row, there are hundreds of them. 
seated on the ground, heads shaved, blindfolded. Their hands are bound behind their backs as dozens of guards hover in SWAT uniforms. It's unclear who these prisoners are, but Western intelligence sources tell CNN they believe the video is authentic, that it shows Muslim ethnic minorities, and that the video was shot in Xinjiang, China. I've never been so worried about the world and America in my life. No matter where I've been, amongst the 60 countries that I've visited, that I've traveled to, I could always rely on returning home to the land of the free, the home of the brave. But today, within our borders, I see mostly cowards. I see nothing but an increased stranglehold on our constitutional freedoms. The separation of us based on our ideology and our skin color versus what should be our shared American values of freedom, of liberty, of free speech, and the ability to achieve the American dream if we work hard. We must stand up for these American values, lest they become extinct, choked by the stranglehold of an ideological python of wokeness that is quickly suffocating our country. If you guys like this material, share it with a friend, thumb up this video, and subscribe. Peace and blessings to everybody out there.